SpaceX shares more details on OFT2. Arian Group begins testing. Hello everyone, welcome back. Here is our new episode with latest SpaceX and space news. So, let's get started. Today we have some fantastic updates from SpaceX's side about the second orbital flight test of Ship 25 and Booster 9. Today, when I took the SpaceX's official website, I saw some interesting updates about the entire flight. This wasn't there until yesterday, so now I will read out the entire information written down there. Starship returned to integrated flight testing with its second launch from Starbase in Texas. While it didn't happen in a lab or on a test stand, it was absolutely a test. What we did with this second flight will provide invaluable data to continue rapidly developing Starship. On November 18th, 2023, Starship successfully lifted off at 7.02 a.m. Central Time from Starbase in Texas and achieved a number of major milestones. All 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster started up successfully and for the first time completed a full duration burn during ascent. Starship executed a successful hot stage separation, powering down all but three of Super Heavy's Raptor engines and successfully igniting the six second stage Raptor engines before separating the vehicles. This was the first time this technique has been done successfully with a vehicle of this size. Following separation, the Super Heavy booster successfully completed its flip maneuver and initiated the boost back burn before it experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly. The vehicle breakup occurred more than three and a half minutes into the flight at an altitude of approximately 90 kilometers over the Gulf of Mexico. Starship's six second stage Raptor engines all started successfully and powered the vehicle to an altitude of approximately 150 kilometers and a velocity of approximately 24,000 kilometers per hour, becoming the first Starship to reach outer space and nearly completing its full duration burn. The flight test's conclusion came when telemetry was lost near the end of second stage burn prior to engine cutoff after more than eight minutes of flight. The team verified a safe command destruct was appropriately triggered based on available vehicle performance data. The water-cooled flame deflector and other pad upgrades performed as expected, requiring minimal post-launch work to be ready for upcoming vehicle tests and the next integrated flight test. With a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and this flight test will help us improve Starship's reliability as SpaceX seeks to make life multi-planetary. Data review is ongoing as we look for improvements to make for the next flight. The team at Starbase is already working final preparations on the vehicles slated for use in Starship's third flight test, with ship and booster static fires coming up next. Thank you to our customers, Cameron County Spaceflight fans, and the wider community for the continued support and encouragement. And congratulations to the entire SpaceX team on an exciting second flight test of Starship. Yes, that's it. Cool, isn't it? All right, let's break down some key points I've gathered from this information. First off, they made it clear that the recent orbital flight test, too, OFT2 provided a bunch of important data and they're taking the time to really go through it. You know, I heard some folks saying OFT2 was a big flop, but that's not the case. People who are into SpaceX, be it fans or employees, understand that test flights are all about learning and improving. The real win here is the valuable data they got. Another cool thing is that they mentioned the water-cooled flame deflector and pad upgrades did what they were supposed to do. This means there's not much work needed after the launch for the upcoming tests. I mentioned this in one of my recent episodes right after the flight, and it's great to see these upgrades doing well. Elon Musk had talked about the crazy amount of designing and tweaking SpaceX had to do for the launch tower and mount, so this success is a big deal. The last bit to note is they're getting ready for the next flight test, with ship and booster static fires on the horizon. They didn't mention about the ship and booster that are assigned for the third orbital flight, but from what I've gathered, it's likely ship 28 and booster 10. So summing it up, OFT2 was a success in terms of gathering crucial data, and the upgrades on the launch pad are performing as expected. 
As we look forward to the next steps, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. We're here to keep you in the loop with exclusive news content, especially focusing on SpaceX Starship program and other space agencies worldwide. Stay tuned so you don't miss out on the latest updates. Arian Group is unleashing an absolute game changer in the form of the Smart Upper Stage for Innovative Exploration, affectionately known as SUSIE. This venture, which began testing its wings in recent weeks, is Arian Group's response to a multitude of challenges confronting European spaceflight. The SUSI project, shrouded in a bit of mystery since its announcement at the International Astronautical Congress in September 2022, has embarked on a transformative journey with the initiation of testing for a diminutive yet dynamic demonstrator. This mini version, standing at a modest 2 meters tall and weighing in at a cool 100 kilograms, is propelled by a jet engine and its ignition dance commenced in October at the Arian Group's Les Mureaux facility. Conceptualized as an internally funded initiative, SUSIE is not merely a test of technical prowess. It harbors grand aspirations to fortify European independence in space endeavors by cultivating capabilities for both cargo and human transport. Arian Group envisions SUSI as a pivotal player in shaping a competitive, innovative and robust space logistics framework for Europe, catering to the burgeoning and diverse spectrum of space applications. The 1x6 scale test and learn demonstrator is not just a technological preview. It serves as the inaugural concrete stride in Arian Group's strategic roadmap. This roadmap is meticulously crafted to swiftly attain mastery and harness the essential technologies requisite for validating the SUSI concept, particularly during low-speed flight, approach and landing phases. But wait, there's more! SUSI, in its full-size glory, stands an impressive 12 meters tall, spans a width of 5 meters, and boasts a payload capacity of a whopping 7 tons. Picture this behemoth launching majestically atop an Arian 64 rocket, or hold your breath, accommodating five astronauts comfortably seated in a row, gazing forward toward the spacecraft's celestial tip. In the grand scheme of things, SUSI is not just about size and spectacle. It's engineered to be fully reusable, potentially signaling a paradigm shift towards reduced long-term costs and enhanced mission efficiency. Parachute and abort tests are scheduled, and the hop testing spectacle with the demonstrator is expected to continue until the second quarter of 2025. So that's all about today's episode. See you tomorrow, and until then goodbye.